rectilinear. Nope, that's not something you catch from sitting down too much. It actually means a straight line, moving in a straight line, the directions of straight lines. Welcome everybody. Once again, I'm your host, Alistair of the Modern Modernist. So why on earth are we talking about rectilinear? Today, I'm sitting in to a lot of firsts today. First, this is the earliest Strang Brothers home I've done on the channel. It's 1960, it is year one. It is fascinating the differences of year one to when they got rolling and how things have changed. So there's a lot to go over. Second of all, there's no agent to really thank today because this house has been sold. It's currently, it's actually, I think the escrow closes in a couple of days. This was a fan of the channel who contacted me and said, could I show their home on the channel? Absolutely. What else that also does for me is today, I don't have to hold back. I don't have to worry about offending or upsetting an agent that's trying to sell a home with anything that they may perceive that is negative. So, I mean, are there sometimes I wanna bash houses? No, but sometimes there are things I wanna say of like, that shouldn't have happened, this should be this way, but I don't wanna detract from their sale because that's not fair. I'm an agent too, so I totally get it. So we're gonna have fun today. Uh, and yeah, so a couple of things. Rectilinear, why did I bring that up? Straight lines. Uh, that's all over in the mid-mod movement. It's all over this house and in more ways than one. The fireplace, see, as you can see, those are all straight lines that define squares. That is an example of rectilinear. Um, another example of, remember, sometimes I'll be careful what I say. Someone painted the fireplace. Seriously? So, uh, no, this should be bare brick. That, hold on a second. That, it's a fireplace. That actually should be black, that hearth. Um, luckily, they didn't put a hearth over it, um, some marble, and then glue it down. And when you go to tear it up, it tears up all the surface concrete. This is an easy fix. Um, you're inside a home, so you gotta be careful. You can't just bring sand blasting in because you have all kinds of stuff going on. But um, dry ice blasting. They use it a lot in the automotive industry on engine blocks nowadays. It's a little more sensitive and doesn't cause as much damage to dust getting onto other parts of the car. So. That needs to be sandblasted um, or dry iced blasted and taken back to its original form. And what's nice is I can say that out loud and not worry about having to offend an agent that's trying to sell the place. So uh, that's cool. Here's something we have not seen on this channel in any String Brothers homes. Air vents on the floor. What? Alistair, you told me air vents they're always above doorways and ceilings because ductwork runs in ceilings. This Strang Brothers home, 1960, I mean, seriously, this must be, it's within the first 10 or 15 homes built. It's on a raised foundation. Strings have always been built on slabs. We're on a raised foundation. Every room, um, there's, a, there's a laundry room, I'll show you in a minute, that's actually sitting on a slab. The rest of the house is raised. I'll show you how we know this. But let's get started, shall we? So. Here we go. This is, what's well, like I always do, right? We got a front door. Okay, there it is. An original feature that we have, which is kind of nice. See, that's a globe light. That's actually very original. Um, and then, like I said, as you can see, hold on a second, right? So I'm here, right? And we're coming up, we're stepping up some steps because we're going onto a raised foundation. Front door. That is the wrong, very non-original front door. Easy fix. I just like that I can say this stuff out loud. Um, again, watch me behind. Step one, step two, we're down. We're actually on the foundation of the house right now. And this is a laundry room off of the front door. So water heater, washer, dryer, it's a laundry room. And what's very cool, these very early strings, as I'm learning, like today I'm learning with you. Um, there's a little side room off of the laundry room. It's, like, it's tiny, a little office. It's got a slider. And then there's a half bath right here. Very, very cool. And there we go. Let's do that. But there we go. So ceilings these are throughout this whole house Let's see if we can get a good view um that light's too in the way here we go this is throughout the whole house 
See, these are all like a wood ceiling. And again, straight lines, rectilinear. Um, which I just love this house. This is so original. And I guess that is the wrong front door. So what is the right front door? Um, solid, flat plane. Um, you'll see some people, they do like a glass door. So it will be a smaller frame, right perimeter. And then the whole thing will be like a frosted glass. That would keep it in, in tradition of mid-mod. Um, another thing is, so original strand, or oh, say later strings had like a pebble dash entryway. And then this would be pebble dash carried into the house. This is actually a slate. It is original. It's very cool. Uh, I like it. We've got the beams. They're black throughout and they go all the way out. They have been cropped front and back. Um, so they've obviously at some point had some dry rot and that was a repair. That's easy to extend them back out again and do, uh, they do these aluminum sort of steel extensions. You can paint them. You'll never know that they're extensions. Kitchen. This is a cool thing. Ready? So, that is your kitchen. The range, we're gonna get to that. Oven is where it should be. This, that's the early days of a coffee cabinet. As you can see, that's on two supports. Whereas later what Carter did was you just had one central support and a very, very sturdy wood beam running under the cabinet and the top to support its weight. And it just sort of hung out there. Whereas on this one, nope, it's a single cabinet bolted, but it's still, it's the inspiration of what would then later become um, a coffin cabinet. Here's something I like, this bit of history. I, I hate it when people move in, buy a med mod, rip out its past with no actual reminder of what, of what it was. And I like this. So they've had to replace a cooktop. Cooktops break, they fail, they get old. I understand that. But look at this. That is the original controls of the original cooktop, which would have been just a regular four rings, electric, and then the controls are here on the wall. But I like the fact that I've left them behind. I also like this. Formica countertops, they left them behind. So nice. It is so, so cool. This house is absolutely amazing. Um, floor registers, like I said, Here's a noise you don't hear in a string. At least any other one we've done. Ready? Yeah, I want to raise foundation. I don't know. Yeah, it's right. I can't dance, but oh well, laugh. Um, here's something I, didn't, I always mention, but now I can go on a proper rant about them. Ceiling fans. No. Gosh, look at this. And then you end up with this. You got this wire up the side, like I ah, just, and it's so low, it's on the beam. I mean, I'm 5'10", right? I mean, anyone north of six foot, it's just a hazard. And they just look terrible. It's not big mod. I don't even know what mod that is. I mean, pff. anyways. All right, enough about my ceiling fan rant. Now you know how I really feel. Um, so, raised foundation. Okay, look at this. So, there's my ceiling in the living room. We come around, hallway. Look at that. Same height as I've done in the past with strings. You have a lowered ceiling because your HVAC, which is in this a traditional spot. There's the, the there's the unit and that door central to the house. And all the ductwork runs off of that. And it runs below the roof line of the house, but above the ceiling. But in this case, it all runs underfoot because it's a raised foundation. But clearly Carter, Jim, Bill, Strang, someone decided, you know what? Let's do it. Put above the ceiling below no rose foundations you just build straight on the slab because there's the intake and usually they're down here on the ground and then they run up to the ceilings because the other thing you don't get on this is we come down the hallway here is see there's no no vents above doors they are all in the ground so this is a, uh, we're in the primary suite right now. And uh, it's interesting, uh, another common complaint with these mid-mods is we're in the primary and the primary bath is not a primary bath. Um, people were smaller back then. And not only that, people just used the bathroom, like, you know, bathroom, right? Go number one, number two, shower, sink, boom. Homes today 
I think bathrooms on primary suites have almost become like like a, I don't know, place of respite and rest, and they hang out in there. And back in the day, you just got ready and you went to work, so you didn't need a big bathroom. Plus, people were smaller. So, uh, but yeah, um, another thing I've noticed too, this has, let's see, a door. Uh, Carter, Bill, Jim, a lot of their bathrooms in their later homes, you did have a pocket door. You could convert this to a pocket door. And that would actually give you more room. Um, I do like that. Again, hinges, I talk a lot of hinges on this channel. Those are original aluminum hinges. Um, I like it, I would remove them all get them all sprayed um, or once again back to like uh, dry ice get all the paint off so you can see the aluminum and put them back on in all their glory to show them because that was Carter's big thing was aluminum door hinges another thing I've noticed this only has a shower there's no bathtub so it'll be another complaint for somebody but that's just what you did back then the bathrooms were not a place of rest and relaxation back then they had just purpose function so a lot of vanities in the later strings were floating in these early homes, they hadn't done that yet. So there's the vanity, and it touches the ground. It's on the floor. But that's an original vanity to this house. So that's very cool. It's just different to see how things were starting. You could call this house very much these early ones. They were just, they were ideas. And I'll take you some, we'll go outside and look, and I'll show you how original strengths, how the neighborhood started too. So hopefully I don't forget. But there we go. Closet. Absolutely. Same again. Windows. And again, the early, the later houses, that would have been open to the primary to let more light through, vice versa. Um, these ones, they go up to the ceilings. So that's different. So there's another change that happened over time. So there's primary. This is second bedroom. And again, closet, that doorway, that touches. Later strings, it did not. Like I said, it's, it's so weird to like, be standing on a raised foundation in a string brother's home. You don't get that. And then to have, you know, a standard string, I could touch the ceiling in the hallway. I can't on this. Um, again, another this bed. This is a three bedroom house, by the way, guys. And built in closet. So these closets, you know, when they're an interior wall, they don't open it up, it goes right to the ceiling. But when it's on an exterior wall with a window, it was always an opening on the later string homes. And then closet space in the hallway, typical. It's actually a big house, almost 2,000 square feet. And so let's go outside. And let's talk about outside. Outside cladding. This has been changed. This is not original. It's kind of like the Hardy Brothers, Hardy Backle board. Um, it's okay, it works, it's not original. This would have been similar style, but not this overlap. It would have been flat and then butted up to each other. But someone at some point had to replace it and that's what they went with. Um, these beams, again, see all these in the back? They've all been lopped and that's fine. But I'd, I'd, I'd go back to the original way, but it's not a, an urgent repair. It's more so just to make your home more aesthetic. So we've also got is, there's two storage sheds that have been put on. Um, that one there, sorry. That's actually an additional structure. We're not gonna worry about it. It's not string, it's been added later. But these here, I'm trying to figure them out if they were added later or if they're part of the original design. It'd be interesting to get the blueprints. So strings always built one structure. And within that structure, it contained, um, you know, like this it contained, contained your garden shed. So it was attached to the house. You couldn't access access it from within the house. You had to leave the house on the outside. So I'm not sure if these were original or added on. I can't tell. Because it's strange that that other um, room that I walked in on beginning there, that would usually not be accessible to the house and that would have been an outside shed. And there is a slider. So it'd be interesting to get the original plans of this house to see if these were added later, if that was converted to see what it was. I don't know. But these do seem odd. They seem like afterthoughts. But it is nice. I mean, it's done in the string, in the taste of string. So that I do, I like that. That's very cool. Let me come down the side of the house. This will be an add-on, but it's in the flavor of string. Here, look. That. Globe light. That would not be original. That would be an add-on. But I like it. 
it is cool it's very neat how they do this so let's just go back inside i'm going to walk through the slider where the fireplace is you know the one that's been painted and we're going to come in and like i said like these ceilings i mean this this wood um got the beam but the wood the ceiling the slat i like that very original and different you don't see it on any other strand um, this is a really cool house. It's, this is a good find. It hasn't been too much altered from its original state, and it would be easy to convert back to how it was. And it's kind of nice. I think what's kind of cool, I would I replace my just because they look old. But, you know, it's even got all these original, these have yellowed over time. But you can swap these out and with brand new. And there's even companies out there that make, I'm sure... There's retro and they make all this stuff brand new. So yeah, this, so this room confuses me. It, this is definitely original. This is the laundry room. It'd be very interesting to see if that was added from the original floor plan. And that may have been the original shed. I don't know. So, uh, but it is cool. It is a, it's very, it's, it's a big, like this almost 2000 square foot. It's a big home. Um, but it's just so strange to see registers for HVAC, like I said, you know, in the floor. You don't see that in a string home. And the other thing that gives this away, like how can you tell this is an early string? By A, I can look it up and it tells me the build date. It's 1960. That was the first year they started. So like I said, this is easily within the first 10 to 15 homes they built. No question about it. But when Bill and Jim started, they would buy a lot and put a house on it originally so there's no other look if we go outside i'm gonna go outside here you have a full view of the house and we're gonna so you can see what this house looks like so there is the carport okay there's that so when we go scan the neighborhood you ready see the neighbors and look not a string in sight nothing because they would just buy one lot and build one house. Because you gotta remember, back then, this was, um, it was an idea. I mean, they met, Jim and Bill, what, they met Carter Sparks. I think it was like, mom, like to, uh, equivalent to what we like mommy and me classes when you first have first kids. And that's how they met. And I was like, do you wanna try this? Do you wanna get together? Do you wanna see if this works? So that's how it all got rolling. So, <clears throat> These early houses, they were projects. It was like, let's let's see if this works, let's see if it sticks. And you can see some of the early stuff here that did transfer over. And you see some of the stuff that was like, yeah, it doesn't work. And so it, it didn't stay. But it's nice to see that whoever's owned this home over the years has, um, has kept it. And the new owner, who is, like I said, is a fan of the channel. So that was kind of cool to get a reach out. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, and from what I understand, they're going to try and keep this original pretty close to. Um, and they'll modify and, and update. You always do. You always want to kind of live in 2024, right? Like the rest of the world. But some stuff they're going to leave. Uh, even the hardware. See, this is all. I don't know if this is original, but it's very cool. It all sort of goes. Uh, all these cabinets are original. You've got a built-in desk. That's as it was. Fridge. It's just too big for the space. It is a newer fridge, it's a modern day fridge, but there's companies out there that make uh, retro mid-mod fridges. Um, yes, you won't be able to put as much food in it, but that just overpowers the kitchen and it just looks out, it sits too far out from the cabinet. I wouldn't do it, but anyway, that's me. So anyway, there we go. I've learned a lot today. Hopefully you have. It's been an absolute pleasure that I've been kind of like, you know, able to speak my mind more than usual, which is nice. So if you know me personally, that's a very hard thing for Alistair to do. So uh, this is one of the videos that, you know, hey, you get to see how I really feel. So uh, thank you very much everybody for letting me do this. I really appreciate it. It's been fun video in a house and seeing a string this early. Um, it's been nice. So anyway, once again, I'm your host, Alistair, the Modern Modernist. Thank you very much and uh, be good to each other humans. Take care, bye-bye.